This is Nollywood. It is the second largest film industry in the world, coming second only to Bollywood. Nollywood produces an average of 50 movies a week, generating a sector of 3.3 billion US dollars. It's a fast growing industry, employing some 300,000 people, creating new opportunities for the country and for its citizens. However, not everything is as good as it seems. There is a dark side of the industry, piracy. Piracy is a huge problem in Nollywood. For every 10 films distributed, 8 are pirated and watched illegally. This figure translates that only 20% of Nigerian producers and marketers are getting their money from sales of their materials. If piracy continues to be a major threat, then the future of the industry looks bleak. So what can Nollywood do to defeat piracy? Well, to understand this we must go back to the beginning. Back to 1992. This is Living in Bondage, directed by Chris Obu Rapu. It was one of the first Nollywood films made and it kick-started the industry. To distribute their film, the makers of Living in Bondage relied on marketers from Lagos, Abuja and other major cities in Nigeria. However, these marketers were in a brand new industry. They had never before distributed a film. So what did they do? They mass produced the film, duplicating and selling as many copies as they could. So um, basically there was no control formula. The lack of knowledge was the reason why this was happening. By the time they decided to control it, things had gotten bad because you know, an industry that does not start with structure, uh, it's hard to just like build that structure along the way. This is Rejoice Abusta from the University College London. Rejoice did her undergraduate thesis on piracy in Nollywood and has been amazing with helping me with my research. So piracy was there at the beginning with living in bondage. But as the industry grew, the attitude towards defeating piracy didn't. When Nollywood started, the government completely ignored that area of industry. They didn't think it was viable enough and you have to understand it from the point of view that you know coming out of colonial the colonial rule and all of that nigeria was trying to find itself meanwhile there were these young people that had just started discovering film and they were making it and they were spreading it all across if the government were more attentive that was the time for them to build infra infrastructures create laws that will guide and protect the filmmakers create laws that will help them create content that they earn money from but the government was really slow and by the time it got involved things had the pirates had control the government's neglect towards movie piracy created these huge networks of movie pirates that are able to distribute illegal copies from street markets all across the country the Alaba International Market has one of the largest and most notorious networks of movie pirates. In the academic journal The Conversation, Dr. Olude Otade wrote, There are two categories of pirates, often working together. First are registered retailers who displayed original white-faced copies of films for sale, but concealed the green-faced pirated copies in their shops. They claim to be retailers of original Nigerian films, but use the original copies purchased legally to mass produce pirated copies for sale to increase profit. The second category comprised of associates. Officially, they are appointed by the copyright owners to distribute their film. But owing to their strategic position in the distribution chain, they reportedly make secret business deals with dubbing companies. These companies dub copies without obtaining legal permission from the copyright owners. This second category is truly the disorder of Nollywood. Because piracy controls so much of the market, some of those at the top of the industry are corrupted. In order for them to make real profit, they will work with the pirates, distributing pirated copies of their own films. Dr. Tade continues to write, In Nollywood, the marketing bosses are often in on the scam. These dodgy bosses are sometimes major financiers of films in Nigerian film industry. They wield a lot of power, and use this power to gain total control of the market by working with the pirates to illegally distribute the very films in which they finance they are able to secure income from both legal and illegal streams yes this corruption is bad and shouldn't happen but who can really blame them piracy has such a strong grasp on the market that it's forcing filmmakers to pirate their own work creating this unsustainable short-term deal perhaps if piracy wasn't such a massive threat to begin with this kind of corruption wouldn't even exist in the first place. 
One of the main contributors towards piracy is the lack of knowledge of the copyright law. The movie Pirates of Nollywood are not being punished at all for their crimes, and the industry isn't receiving the recognition it needs from the government. And it also comes from the lack of knowledge, because if the whole of Nollywood very early on was treated like an area of industry that is viable, that has the potential to just like create a lot of capital for the youth, for Nigeria's economy in general, then things would be done differently. Then you would know that if you pirate a film, you could get into big trouble. When you compare Nollywood with other competitive industries, it's clear to see that it's not backed by its own government. Let's look at South Africa for an example. Despite being a smaller industry compared to Nollywood, it is a much smarter one. This is the co-production agreement treaty between South Africa and the United Kingdom. This document details mutual benefits for each party, like having two co-producers from each country on a production, cultural benefits and balanced filmmaking contributions. With help from their government, both industries are able to draw in international investments. This is the attitude the Nigerian government needs to take in order for the industry to fully thrive. In the Nigerian Tribune, Professor Sholo Fosado says, the government should provide more funding opportunities so that the private sector can be attracted to also invest. The government should establish an arts endowment agency and fund it. So it's clear to see that Nollywood needs support from its government in order to win the fight against piracy and to become a thriving industry. And in recent years, we have seen Nollywood starting to collaborate with international production companies such as Disney and Netflix. I believe it's only a matter of time before Nigeria's government regards Nollywood as a viable industry. Soon we hope to see change in distribution and a better infrastructure. But until then, piracy will continue to be a major threat for Nollywood. There will be more loss, more corruption and more disorder. The government needs to step in and take proper action. The only question left to ask is when.